In order to be awarded a merit for your assignment, you need to cover all the points that are required to gain a pass, but in addition to this, you need to go into greater depth. For example, the first pass criteria for learning outcome one requires you to explain different types and purposes of organizations. The merit criteria requires you to expand on this and asks you to analyze how the structure, size and scope of different organizations link to the business objectives and products and services offered by the organization. So immediately you can see that you need to provide an analysis here rather than simply an explanation. You need to think about the significance and relevance of the points you are making and make reasoned judgments about the impact an organization's structure, size and scope will have. You need to be able to identify what factors are significant and what are not. More specifically, in this case, you need to relate your analysis to business objectives and to the products and services offered by an organization. So, for example, in what ways do you think the fact that an organization only has 10 employees influences its business objectives? Is there a link between how an organization is structured and its ability to offer certain types of products? Can some products and services only be provided economically by organizations which are large in size or scope? The merit criteria for learning outcome one requires you to make reasoned judgments about issues like these and support them with well thought out arguments. Simply describing what you see will not be enough. The rationale behind the merit criteria for learning outcome two is pretty much the same. The past criteria requires you to explain the relationship between different organizational functions. The merit criteria requires you to analyze the advantages and disadvantages of interrelationships between organizational functions. So they both cover the same topic, but the merit criteria is asking for a more in-depth analysis rather than just an explanation of the relationship. For learning outcome three, which looks at the macroeconomic environment, we have some more specific guidance. The merit criteria here requires you to apply appropriately the PESEL model to support a detailed analysis of the macro environment within an organization. And PESEL, of course, is the acronym for political, economic, social, technological, legal and environmental factors. So this is really building on the less detailed identification of positive and negative impacts that is required to meet the PASS criteria. And finally, for learning outcome four, which is concerned with the interrelationships between internal strengths and weaknesses and external macro factors, the merit criteria gives us another acronym. Apply appropriately SWOT or TOWS analysis and justify how they influence decision making. So the strengths and weaknesses required to meet the PASS criteria are now extended to strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you need to justify how these influence decision making. So it's not enough to just suggest or describe a relationship between internal and external factors. You need to justify why you think this relationship exists. So what evidence have you got to support your opinion? And then what effect might this relationship have? What decisions might an organization have to make in the light of the relationships you've identified? And again, provide a rationale for how and why you've arrived at the views you are expressing.